Brian, and there are plans to expand indoctrination. That's right. Well, Idahoans are also concerned. Horror shot. That line would be moving a little bit farther west. I'm like crying. Nobody wants to Dark see. Dark money is influencing policy in our state. Well, that's not how this works. Well, hello there. I'm Brian Hyde, and this is Nowhere to Hide. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be talking about a bad case of the blues, as in Idaho is uh, flirting with uh, becoming a full-on blue state. And, uh, you know, this is, there are many times in life it's very satisfying to be able to say, I told you so. This isn't necessarily one of those times, if only because there is a lot at stake. So thanks to the uh, Institute for Legislative Analysis for their just-released report, Democrats control Idaho Senate Republicans narrowly hold the House. Now, I'll explain the methodology by which they arrived at that, but basically they have done a very thorough analysis of how each legislator votes. And based on that vote, they've assigned them philosophically to which party they would belong to. In other words, does their party advocate limited government, more personal freedom, or does it advocate more government, more expenses, uh, less personal freedom? So let's take a quick look at uh, at some of the uh, the details on this. This was published. This was published on limited governor gov limited gov dot org. A just released study on the Idaho legislature has found a number of Idaho lawmakers are incorrectly aligning themselves with political parties that do not match their values based on their voting records. Now the findings are part of an analysis of five thousand six hundred seventy lawmaker votes conducted by the Institute for Legislative Analysis or ILA a national policy and data hub recently established by the former scorecard team of the American Conservative Union, PAC. So here are some of the particulars. The study reassigned each lawmaker to the correct political party that matches their philosophical values based upon their votes. And the data reveals that philosophically Democratic lawmakers are actually in control of the state Senate. 21 Democrats to 14 Republicans. Yes, some of those uh, Democrats actually uh, are registered as Republicans and have run as Republicans, but how they vote actually shows that they're much more in league with their Democrat counterparts. While philosophically Republican lawmakers are holding on to a narrow majority in the state House of Representatives, that would be 38 Republicans to 32 Democrats. All lawmakers are placed on a zero to 100 political ideology scale based on their adherence to the limited government principles of the U.S. Constitution. Well, that's hardly an objective. Is it really? I mean, you know, I don't know if you can get a more objective source than that because it's right there in in plain writing, plain declarative English. You don't have to. Well, I guess if you are on the Supreme Court, you might have the need to twist it and turn it and try to manipulate it into something that fits what you want. But the average person should be able to read the Constitution and, and easily understand this is legitimate. This is something to which people consent to government doing versus Government that's so big that it's there to tuck you in at night and read you a bedtime story and wake you up in the morning when it's time to go to school at a government school. So the way this works is scores of zero to 50 percent equate a Democrat philosophy while scores of 51 to 100 percent mark a Republican philosophy. Look, I know somebody's going to protest. Oh, aren't there more parties than just the two? Yes. So this, this isn't quite the binary choice that, that you're thinking, but it's still nonetheless a very revealing look at what happens when, when these lawmakers run as Republican but cast their votes otherwise. Let's, uh, let's take a look. It says the ILA applies the same methodology to every state that it researches. Now, I thought this was interesting. In most states, including California, Florida, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, not a single self-defined Republican scored below a 60%. Meaning if they ran as a Republican, they tended to vote as a Republican. But Idaho, wait till you see some of these scores. Idaho represents one of the very worst cases of fraudulent party identification, maybe even worse than what the ILA recently exposed in Wyoming, which is suffering from a very similar blues problem. People who say I'm red, but vote blue predictably every time. So this is a a graph that illustrates this. It's hard to see because the the print is very fine. So I'm going to switch over here to some of the names in the Idaho Senate. Philosophically Democratic. Now you'll see that some of these, well, of course, that is a Democrat. But look at this. Treg Burnt from Meridian, 45%. He's safely on the Democratic side. This was an interesting one. This is from my backyard. Linda Wright Hartgen, 42%. And some of them you would expect, okay, well, yeah, these uh, Melissa Wintrow, of course, she's she's pretty hardcore Democrat. Look how many Republicans are. Chuck Winder. Yes, the godfather, Chuck Winder. 
He only comes in at 44%. Now, let's look at the ones who are philosophically Republican. Let's see if I can pull this up here. Here we go. Philosophically Republican. These are the these are the senators. Notice anything about the ones that score very high? Scott Herndon, Tammy Nichols, Glenita Zeiderveld, Dan Foreman, among others. I, I'm, le I'm leaving a few out here and there. Chris Trakel, Brian Lenny. These are the ones that Governor Little is actually actively working with various groups to send out uh, campaign mailers or even door-to-door door, uh, door -door, uh, messages, uh, basically saying these people are trying to turn Idaho into San Francisco. In other words, he's targeting people from his own party. But here are the philosophically Republican ones. You'll notice the five troublemakers are on this list. Kind of makes you wonder, uh, wow, I wonder why they would want to get rid of them. Why would, why would some of the people in power be so interested in, in tossing them, you know, overboard? Now, in the, in the House of Representatives, again, here are the philosophically Democrat representatives. And there are some names that you would expect to see in there, but there are others like Rod Furness. Man, I thought he was a pretty strong Republican. Matthew Bundy, same thing. Julie Yamamoto, dependably Democratic. Ilana Rubel, I actually just had a chance to interview her this morning. Wonderful lady. Very, very hardcore Democrat. And look just two places up from her, Greg Lanting, who is a Republican from the Magic Valley, but is performing as a Democrat. And I mean, look at the percentages. He's at 34%. So again, these, this is just one measure. It's, it's not supposed to be a comprehensive, this judges their very soul. But what it's showing is their rhetoric does not always match their voting record. Oh, by the way, for the more uh, conservative or philosophically Republican voters, you'll see some familiar names on here as well. Heather Scott right up there near the top of the list among others. And look, it's it's not to say that, you know, therefore, you know, all politicians are are bad. Just you need to be aware as a voter that some people will say anything in order to get into power and then they will do anything to stay in power afterwards. And I don't know if it strikes you as odd, but it's to me, that's a little bit disturbing that Idaho has such a strong, strong uh, appearance and reputation of being, oh, it's a red state. It's a conservative. It's a Republican state. Basically, if you win in the Republican primary in the springtime, you're pretty much guaranteed you're going to win in the fall. That's how strong a hold the GOP has. Except now we have, you know, groups pushing, well, but we need to open the elections up and we need to do ranked choice voting. We need to do something. They want to fix the system because it makes it easier to get those wishy-washy ones that will say one thing and then vote another way. Oh, by the way, you're probably wondering, uh, so how did our beloved Governor Little stack up in this? Well, I'm glad you asked because here's how he stacked up. Not impressive. 42.53%. And, and they do go into a little bit of detail as to why the governor's ratings are so low. He, he governs like a Democratic governor. So the ILA also evaluated the bill signage and veto history of Idaho's governor through the nation's first legislative governor rating system. And the analysis found that Governor Brad Little sided with the limited government position 42.53% of the time, which corresponds with a Democratic political philosophy. I mean, I've seen people pointing that Dustin Hurst especially has been pointing this out on Twitter for ages. What does it mean when the when the Democrats all are in agreement with you, Governor, among others? Well, that means you're you're aligned with people who want to expand government. The data revealed that Governor Little strongly aligned with limited government on policies relating to election integrity and individual liberties, but he aligns with the progressive wing of the Democratic Party on fiscal, spending, and regulatory related issues. And the money, by the way, that's where you really got to watch because right now it appears that uh, the legislature more and more is just becoming kind of a clearinghouse for taxpayer dollars to be laundered to various special interests that have curried the right kind of favor with those in power. The governor and every lawmaker has provided separate ratings across 10 key policy categories to help better pinpoint political party alignment. Now, again, this isn't to make you hate them. This is just to point out. Actions and words need to match up if you're going to actually trust people. Unfortunately, it appears a significant number of philosophically Democratic lawmakers have decided to mislabel their party affiliation as Republican. That's according to Ryan McGowan, CEO of the Institute for Legislative Analysis. This deceptive practice by so-called Republican lawmakers should greatly concern the citizens of Idaho as it is resulting in the implementation of big government pro policies. Such policies are familiar to progressive states like California or New York, places I don't think are shared, or places with values I don't think are shared by many in the gem state. 
He's got a good point. But hey, don't worry. We'll just uh, we'll just convert the gem state, right? Tammy Nichols, uh, Senator Tammy Nichols asks, is this why Governor Little wants to get rid of the five red senators? Is it because philosophically Democrat ideology can't mesh with strong conservative ideology ever, and therefore it must be eliminated? I do have to agree. This is one of the things that uh, these legislators, especially these senators, have been very good about. Not only calling the governor and others out when they have stepped out of line in terms of living up to the ideals they claim to espouse, but also they have been very strong advocates for limiting government power, limiting the costs of government wherever possible. Which, of course, is always portrayed as why they're throwing the children to the wolves, you know, for, for dark money from out of state. Nope. If there was ever a time to open your eyes and recognize who is actually on your side and is working to protect your freedoms, now is that time. Because the people who are ending up on the blue side of that equation, they'll tell you they're on the side of freedom. What are their actions saying, though? Do their actions square with their lofty ideals that they're expressing? Turns out, most, most of the time, no. So, let's talk about the addicted to outrage individuals. This is... This is a tempest in a teapot that uh, nonetheless just whistles and whistles, hoping that somebody will listen. Oh, Idaho Leaders United taking a bold stand here by reminding us that hate has no place in Idaho. The following former, current, or prospective lawmakers have shared this statement to denounce the Idaho Freedom Foundation's hiring of a known anti-Semite and white nationalist. Uh, I want to see some proof here. Well, he said things that we interpret as anti-Semite. Okay, but what does that mean? Well, they can't really do that. We, we said it. Isn't that enough? Not really. If you don't see your lawmakers on this list, please email them. And they then give you a nice list, uh, Madame Defarge style, <laughs> of, of lawmakers who have bent the knee and kissed the ring. And, and basically, they've attended their own struggle session and confessed their sins. And, and they're calling out and, and asking people, please put pressure on the ones who haven't taken our pledge. Now, it's, it's more than ironic. These are some of the same people, Idaho Leaders United. How dare any political party ask its leaders to take a pledge? And yet here these guys are demanding a pledge. I like Brian Alman's uh, some summary of what this press release says. Breaking news, legislators and candidates who have always hated Idaho Freedom Foundation have denounced IFF. And I'm sure they're they're eager to invite anybody to their pity party that they can get. But uh, it's it's all faux outrage. So here are a few of the better responses to Idaho Leaders United. Oh, please. A bunch of sanctimonious quasi-do-gooders pushing a fake narrative so you can all feel morally superior. Give me a break. That's uh, That may seem harsh, but it's actually, it's a great point. People who have to demonstrate how good they are by denouncing the thing that everyone denounces and, you know, adding my name to the list. I, too, stand against this. That's, that's wonderful. Hey, good for you. But uh, do you want to really show me that you're a good person? Show me by how you live, how you treat other people, how you conduct yourself. You know, the hard work of actually being a good person as opposed to proclaiming it because, look at me, I'm against the right thing or the current thing because it changes from time to time. They need outrage in order to generate likes or, or views or whatever. It's, it's, to, to, it's clickbait for, for the easily distracted which unfortunately I'm pretty easily distracted since I noticed it. Anyway, Idaho Leaders United is a racist hate group funded by out-of-state dark money. That's, by the way, tongue-in-cheek, but that's that's exactly what they accuse the Idaho Freedom Foundation of being. A hate group funded by out-of-state dark money. What are they doing with that dark money? Why do we assume that uh, dark money is evil? Unless there's some kind of a racist basis to that. Anyway, John Brown says Idaho Leaders United continues to refuse to disavow pedophile rapists. So I guess they support pedophiles. He's saying it tongue in cheek, but his point is well taken. If you don't disavow this, then you must support this. I'm sorry, that works on the playground maybe, but that's not the kind of thing that uh, that thinking adults will engage in. And, and thinking adults will basically pat them on the head and say, here's a ball. Why don't you go along and play while the adults have a conversation? Okay, let's have a little bit of levity. I think we deserve it. This is courtesy of the Babylon Bee. Leftists wondering why their policy of the complete and utter destruction of America isn't more popular. Oh, gee, I don't know, man. They just have been tearing down every institution that this nation ever was built upon. And we're paying five bucks for gas and government's intruding into every area of our life. Oh, and people are telling us that they hate us and wish bad things would happen to us, but they can't understand why we aren't supporting them. Why isn't this more popular? 
The article, by the way, on the Babylon Bee is hilarious. And one of the things that it points out is, well, I used to think that I hated half the country, but now it appears that uh, more and more people are are falling in line with the things that uh, that made me hate them in the first place. So I'm just going to have to adjust how how many people I hate. Yeah, that'll fix the problem. You just got to hate more people. Pro tip, if hate is really what you need to, to express who you are, you're not a very good person, or at least you, you need to, to consider what you stand for. Why do we stand for what we stand for? Because it matters. And sometimes that means you're going to ruffle feathers. Sometimes you're going to step on toes. Dustin Hurst knows a thing or two about that. But I love the quote that he, he put out here from Seth Dillon. We need to stop caring about what freedom might cost us. They're going to try to raise the price so high that no one's willing to pay it. Now, specifically, what we're talking about here is the, uh, the possibility of being called names or otherwise labeled. And, you know, that anti-Semite, white nationalist, oh, that label. I kid you not. There was there was a, a poster on X who actually was trying to make something racial out of the fact that uh, a, a blogger had been kicked off of a, a previous uh, social media, and it, it wasn't for anything you know nefarious. It just a bunch of accounts got suspended. His was one of them. So when he rejoined that social media, he came back as it was. It's Brian Alman, and he came back as like Gandalf you know, fell when he confronted the Balrog or whatever that was that, that, that he was protecting. Oh, you shall not pass. Well, he came back as Gandalf the White. So Brian, in a nod to the Lord of the Rings, came back and his account was Brian the White. See, he said white. That's racial. So apparently I'm wearing a white shirt, which apparently would, would uh, tag me as racist as well. Oh, and if you brush your teeth with with a toothpaste that's tooth whitening, mm, sorry to tell you, but you know anything white. If your last name is white, oh man, I I, I pity you. you. You're irredeemably racist, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. So, I guess just to do whatever you know the party says. No, as 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 Seth Dillon says, stop caring about what the price of freedom might cost you. And if it's name calling, if it's someone trying to smear you, so what. If you know what's right, make the stand because it's the right thing to do. One final thought here. There's All of us are going to face a day where we are going to exit this life. And when we do, that's when we're going to really evaluate. That's when our conscience is, is going to be there with us. Like it or not, you are going to meet your conscience as you draw your last breath. So if this sign here, I need to be able to tell my children I did not stay silent. If that means something to you, then let that be a, a guidance that sticks in your heart and something that calls you to action. Sitting silent and just, well, they can all go to hell in a handbasket without me. I understand the sentiment. I don't like to get caught up in it either. But I'm also very serious about, I, I will not allow the day to come, number one, to where I can't tell my children that I was, you know, that, oh, I didn't want to speak up because I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. No, I want them to know. I didn't stay silent. And yes, People did not like it. People were angry. They wished bad things to happen to me. Didn't matter. It was the right thing to do because freedom mattered more than keeping my feathers, you know, unruffled. Likewise, if you are a person who uh, who really wants to have a clear conscience, you know, your kids and grad kids standing around your deathbed, do you want to be able to tell them that you stood for what was good and what was true? Or do you want to tell them, well, I went with the lesser of two evils, or I, I went along because I, I wanted to appear as a good person? I know how I would want to answer that. And there's another aspect too, and that is uh, when some of these people who are, are the, the strongest detractors from freedom, when they start to come around to their senses, or if, if they ever start to see how wrong things have gone, and they say, well, why didn't somebody say something? I will be there to tell you, hey, you don't have the excuse of no one ever told us. We damn sure told you. You just didn't want to listen until you had to. You know, it's much better to... Uh, it's much better to get on board the truth train when it's your own voluntary choice instead of when reality is forcing you on there with a pitchfork. Just saying. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Brian Hyde, and this is Nowhere to Hide. are biased, the Idaho Press Club are biased, all media, newspaper, radio. To be completely blunt here, Brian, and there are plans to expand indoctrination. That's right. Well, Idahoans are also concerned. Horror shot. That line would be moving a little bit farther west. I'm like crying. Nobody wants to Dark see. Dark money is influencing policy in our state. Well, that's not how this works.